What's up guys, Agus here from Maker's Muse and today we're going to be printing out the speed controller holder that I designed in Onshape yesterday. So let's get into it. So here I've got Onshape and I've got my holder for my speed controller. So if you haven't seen that video, definitely click the card that's going to pop up now to check it out. It's quite a long video, but uh, I went through it quite slowly step by step. And I'm happy with this design and I want to print it out and test it. So I'm just going to right click it and choose export. And once it does pop up, we're going to choose STL. You know, it's millimeters because I drew in millimeters and resolution. I'm going to go with fine. Okay. And we'll download it. Here we have the up software. So I'm going to be printing it on the up box in ABS. And because it's for a combat robot, I want to print it very dense. And I'm going to probably acetone smooth it afterwards to make it even stronger. So I don't get delamination. So just going to go to open. <laughs> so many parts. Let's go with that. There we go. That's the one. So the first step is to consider orientation. So I designed this specifically by ignoring overhangs. So this will have to have support material because I went with function first instead of sacrificing function with unnecessary material to make it easier to print without support. So the ups print support really well and it's not a concern to me. So in terms of actually printing it, I think I'm going to do it on its side like that. So that means there will be support material here between these two feet, uh, these two faces and here and here. Uh, and that's about it. Maybe a little bit in the holes. But that's really not too bad. That's very little support. Uh, in terms of printing an ABS, some machines may warp in this orientation. You may get warping here, but I'm pretty confident the up will be fine. And it means I don't have any support material to pick away here in this area, which means it will fit onto my speed controller with no issues in terms of tolerance, which I talked a lot about in the first video. So I'm just going to go ahead and preheat my up and then make sure it's on the bed. Yes, we're good. I don't know why it rotates like that. And we're going to go to print. Quality, fast is fine. Resolution, 0.25. Again, this is the, the quality is not too big a deal and 0.25 is always a, a decent medium. Fill, dense, has to be quite strong. And support angle, mm, it's not going to make much of a difference here. I'll just go with 30, leave it at 30. And that's pretty much it. So let's hit OK. It's going to slice it 192 layers for the up box and send it across. So there we go, 56 minutes and 22 grams of plastic. Not too shabby. So I'm going to let that go ahead and we'll see how it turns out. Alrighty guys, well, here it is, it's done. So it took about an hour on the up box and I took it off the, bo the print bed and there was no warping whatsoever despite being an ABS and 100% fill, which is really <laughs> quite impressive and really nice to get dimensionally stable parts. So let's just pull the support off. So as I said, it's generated support on that middle part and between the, the, the sort of tab bits, but it hasn't generated support through the middle, obviously, because it didn't need it. So let's just rip this off. And pull that off. I'm doing this, doing this with my hands. Might need to use the pliers to get in between the holes, though. There we go. So that's the part with all the support materials cleaned off. So, you know, moment of truth. Let's take it to the speed controller. I got one. There we go. And like that. Like a glove. It's actually pretty loose, and that just goes to show the tolerance that the up box can hold. So, yeah. So the idea is it's going to screw down on those four mounting points. Uh, and the fan will go onto those four points as well. Like so. So, let's see if I can find a screw. Um, four screws to test test that mm, these are m2.5 probably force those in if I get the right screwdriver 
yes, it's a real thing. You can get M2.5. <laughs> and let's see if that will tap into these holes. Success, kind of, it will tap. So that's one thread started. You could use actual tap in this, but I don't know why you'd bother with plastic. That's pretty good, and this one. It looks like I got my whole positioning pretty much spot on, which is excellent. Using that neat caliper trick. And there we have it. So that will mount down to the chassis and I can plug this 12 volt fan into, I can probably stick it straight into a 4 cell LiPo to be honest, 14.4 volts. It's a combat robot, it's not designed to last forever. Or I could just stick a resistor in line. And yeah, I, I quite like the look of that. And the, the thing about the fan is it's kind of blocked off on some of its travels, so some of the airflow will be restricted. So with that in mind, it might be worthwhile modifying this file further to allow some clearance for those blades to suck air in from some gaps somewhere. Who knows? iterative design so this is not the end of this design there will be more videos anyway thank you so much for guys for watching this quick video you wanted to see it printed so that's what it looks like printed i do enjoy making them if you want to see more future 3d printing videos on makers muse do subscribe it helps me out uh, a lot quite a lot and i will be putting a mailbag up video very shortly to show you what's coming soon on makers muse and it's really really exciting something to do with this that's a hint it's not a really good hint. See you soon, guys. Bye.